Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Bay Nerd Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, aka the internet's most passionate wine program. And you can see here on this lovely Monday is a different scenario. It is a nice day, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. We have a guest. Mott has been replaced by the lovely Michelle. Not permanently, he's off this week. And uh, the New York Jets with a huge victory, pulled it out yesterday, I was worried about the game, have now lifted my expectations with all the things I saw yesterday. The Browns, Jags, Colts, and Chargers all losing, and obviously, we never root for injuries, but the likelihood that Tom Brady is out for the year. So the dynamic of the AFC has changed, it has put me in a decent mood, I am awfully happy. Maybe a little more than decent mood. Decent, I'm gonna go with. And why don't you introduce yourselves to the Vayner Nation? Uh, my name is Leif Sundstrom, and uh, I met Gary when he was in Portland, and I uh, tricked him into having dinner with me at a restaurant I used to be a sommelier at, Le Pigeon, in Portland. He hustled, he hustled 2.0. <laughs> I was leaving, and I and he wanted to talk to me about some stuff, he said, hit me up on email, I answer all my email, and he said, and then he said, okay, and then I was in the parking lot, you ran out, and I was like, well, you got time tonight. Why bother with email? It's just we're here right now. Let's just do it. I respected the hustle. And we so did it. Lizzie and I and you and the guy who's driving me around for the book place. <laughs> the uh, office escort. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we went to the uh, restaurant. We had a great time. Uh-huh. We ate. Fantastic and then Lizzie meal. and I ran to the Portland airport just in the nick of time until our flight was delayed for two hours. <laughs> I didn't know that part. <laughs> you didn't know that, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> so you've been in the wine world. You were very passionate. Leif really impressed me. I actually recommended him for a job here in the East Coast, which, you know, hopefully things will work out. And DL, DL. and uh, obviously that's why I decided when you got here you wanted to do a little blind tasting challenge which I thought it was a good idea, but I really wanted to make it kind of around where in the area we met a place where sure. I think you have some expertise. Full circle. So yeah, I like the little full circle, yeah. you know? And so um, we have focused on uh, four wines from Oregon and so that's what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's get right into the first one. Shehalem 2006 Dry Riesling Reserve. This wine rolls in at 21 US bones, 90 points wine spectator. And uh, let's see what's going on here. Give you a little pour. Thank you. You're welcome. And a little for me. And why don't we give it a snippy sniff, see what we think about it. I'm a big fan of Shehalem. What's your take on Shehalem being I like them a, a lot. It's one of my favorite wineries out there. I have, um, I don't know if I've had the 06 uh, Riesling. Winemakers, fantastic people. Harry Peterson Edry, who's the main winemaker there. Yep. Gentle, sweet guy. Great gentle. writer, too. Very gentle. Awesome man. Awesome. He's a gentle man. <laughs> Gentleman. I understand. Um, hmm. First thing that strikes me is a very heavy dose of sugar cane. Um, it, you know, if you're if you're drinking mojitos as much as I am, you take a little sugar cane stick and you just eat it. Uh, I get a lot of that coming through the nose. I get apple peel, a little pear biting through as it's well. Like you took the sugar cane and ground up some um, some cement rock into it too, a little bit. Yeah, there's a little minerality. Yeah. So where are you going with that? A little rockiness for the kicks, uh, which is always fun. I also get a very interesting fig component hmm. uh, like coming a green from the nose. Fig, like yeah. The yeah, I do. Like the brighter figs. I like it. Yeah, I get that too. It's like pineapple core almost, a little bit like um, bitter it's sour smell. It's extremely aromatic. Yeah, yeah. It's More so on the, the minerality to me than the fruit though. It's kind of... I mean, the sugar cane is really ripping for yeah. me. I mean, that's really kind of taking the number. If the what? sugar cane could be spicy, it might smell like this. Actually. No, I think that's a pretty... Actually, that's a neat little thing there. I agree, there is a little spiciness to yeah. it that I like. Um, almost cinnamon... Cinnamon... <laughs> What's the Mexican cinnamon? There's the other kind. Cinnamon. You know what I'm talking about? The bark. It's spicier than the regular cinnamon. Really? I don't know it. The maniacs will answer yeah, in the comments. Yeah. What's, what's the non-curly cinnamon? The bark cinnamon. cinnamon. Yeah. Cinnamon. cinnamon. All right. Let's give it a whirl. Get a little attack of petrol. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just a sh just for like a half a second though. It's like the texture, like that lanolin texture of petrol. I uh, I really like the fact that this is a, a low alcohol, reason twelve point six percent alcohol. Um, so it's it, it's not hot in any uh -huh. shape or form. Um, very acidic on the mid palate, mm -hmm. um, which I like quite a bit. What, what what are some of your takes? I got uh, my, one of my initial flavor components. I got it was like white peaches with a little white pepper almost going on there. I like the white peaches. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. That's a really good call, especially those flat ones. Do you know the flat peaches? The the what blue cots, the yeah. donut peaches. Those are awesome. Yeah, I get a little bit of that. Um, I also get a little bit of a. 
You know, it's funny. You said spicy, right? Like pepper. Mm-hmm. I was like tasting. I was like, why am I tasting like a curry kind of thing going mm-hmm. on? Like you know, like kind of like definitely a spiciness, a, a raciness, almost um, almost some of the characteristics you sometimes see from Gravert's Vermeer, right, coming through. I get the steeliness, mm-hmm. which I like quite a bit. Almost like when you're wrestling in a steel cage match, and the guy takes you and slams you into it, <laughs> and you have your mouth open. It's like that steel bar component coming through on And the back. structure is bold enough to be that same thing right there in the center of the palate. It's really nice. And the finish isn't incredibly long, but it's good because it saves it from being hot. As a som, and you know, doing a lot of the wine uh-huh. restaurant stuff in your career, I mean, this is, a, this is just like a dream come true wine. Well, I mean, you don't see many Rieslings coming out of the Northwest yet that are quite like this as far as minerality components and dryness. And clearly the uh, the ability to pair this yeah. with so many foods, yeah. right? I mean, Good point. flexibility Absolutely. is massive on this. Actually, you know what I was thinking about the whole time? Give me some white beans. You know the big white beans? Like the, like the Corona beans? Yeah, love that. I mean, Put some lemon zest on that. I think the Spectator did a good job on this. I, I mean, I think this wine rolls in this range. What kind of wine would you score this in your own little world of your mind? Well, you know, it's always hard not to be biased when you drink lots of wine from the region. And comparing to the rest of the region, I'd go closer to 91, 91 yeah. plus points. I mean, to me, this rolls very deep, very strong, good reasoning. 21 bones, so we're not going to talk about Screaming Value City. We can get a lot of Alsatian and, you know, German and Austrian reasonings. Yeah that are gonna really rock at 21 bones still, even with a Euro dollar conversion. So this is pricey in the scheme of things, but that does not underline the fact that this brought tremendous quality to the standpoint. And I'm really impressed with the wine overall. I'm gonna agree with the wine spectator right down the line. I think this is a 90 point Riesling, and I think there's a lot of people, especially if you wanna go USA, USA, and support some hometown Riesling, where a lot of times mm-hmm. I agree with you, they're still not up to snuff to some of the stuff I'm seeing from Europe. This is really one of the better efforts I've come across. Yeah, and perhaps if I didn't know what a nice guy Harry was, I would probably go down 90 points as well, but. Yeah, you always get one point for <laughs> nice guy. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. All right, let's give a little rinse, let's move on. Sure. Here, we are now going. Tell us a little bit about this one. You got, you know, these guys. You know, I um, never heard of this winery before until Monte the other Bruno. day. Just the other day, Monte Bruno, uh, Pinot Blanc, um, 2007, um, from Filma, right? Filma. Filma. Yeah. Filma. Have I you guess. been there? You know, yeah, but there's not a whole lot going on there. Um, I like how it says Salmon Safe. Yeah, that's, that's an a, official. That's a good. That's a good job. Uh, from Willamette Valley, 13 percent alcohol. Gun. 2007 vintage, not rated, 14 bones. Well, I was Enterprise. told there's only 50 cases of this produced. Is that true? That was what, uh, I went to a wine shop, because I saw they were tasting Oregon wine, and they were tasting this wine. I never heard of it before, and um, I didn't taste it, but the woman said he only makes 50 cases of his whites and far a little bit more of his Pinot. So. I mean, that's pretty impressive if, if we have it here. Yeah. 50 cases. I think I mean, he must live part-time in New York or I something. I have a weird feeling that that's... that might not be true. <laughs> I'm serious, two, so we have to look at two Not barrels. even two barrels. All right, let's give it a snippy snip. Hmm. So did you taste this there? No, I tasted the Gewurz and the Pinot. Ah, no. Interesting nose. I mean, I'm getting a lot of alcohol in the nose. Too. Yeah, so, and, and like some... Some fake medicinal kind of thing, like a... 13%. I don't want to say Flintstone vitamin, because that still has a little bit of fruit component to it. There's More something... like a Tylenol. Yeah, exactly. It's like Crushed not even as tylenol. fun as a Flintstone. <laughs> like all those... Actually, it does have a little bit of that thing going on. There is a, a little bit of like a, a kiwi skin thing going on, which... And don't don't mix that up with kiwi. Very different thing. It's like a dirty kiwi. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, let's give it a whirl. Not loving the nose. There's a little lemon lime thing going on, a little yeah. sprite action. But very much like the pith of those things, it's got the bitterness of the pith quite a bit, I think. I'm not feeling this. You? It's pretty basic. It's you know I, I like a certain amount of bitterness in my wines. A lot of people complain about bitterness, but I think when it's balanced properly, it is like great alchemy when you're eating the right foods with it. But this has too much of that kind of uh, boring bitterness. I love on. bitterness. I mean, actually, I prefer it. The acid, the bitterness, the right. tannins, the character, right? I mean, if we were all the same, it'd be awfully boring. Um, that's why I left Russia. They wanted you all to be the same. Anyway, um, <laughs> solid stuff in, in this regard. Um, it's, a, it's a wine. It's white. It's crisp. It's clean. It's I'll not it hot. What's that? It's not as hot as I thought it was going to be based on a nose. Right. Um, so I give it that. And I also don't mind the little pear thing going on in the yeah. mid palate, which is fine. 
It has a little bit of like a red rubber band, like rubber bands. If you've ever chewed rubber bands, I get a little bit of that in the mid palate transition, which is an awkward little flavor. A little band aid action, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's weird like that. It's like sticky plastic. Well, it might be just a little bit of a rectomyces issue. I don't think it's a bread issue, though. I really don't. Okay. I mean, it's not, you know, bread will, you, you'll taste, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just think it's got a plastic component. I really do. I think it's like a rubber ball, like a pink bouncy rubber ball, or like a racquetball. I ball. think they're implementing that new. How cool were um, racquetballs, by the way? I remember, like, you'd play baseball with them and you'd hit it so far and you'd be like, yeah. You know. I still play racquetball. I thought it was Ken Phelps. So. You ever play racquetball with a racquetball? No. I want to play racquetball. I played. I played good. tennis the other day. I'm getting into it again. Racquetball is good. You can play by yourself. Yeah, I don't like things they can play by themselves. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to go down on this wine. I'm going to go 84 points on this wine, give it a major pass. I think people need to find other things. You're being a little generous, I think. I might be. I'm a, <laughs> I mean, you know, we just talked about the ball. It's like, it's like Jets, one, so. Jets win, there's always like a two-point curve. Everybody knows, subtract two points. This was really an 88. This is really oh, an 81. On, yeah. um, so, um, I, listen, I don't want to bash it, though. The 84 is not a horrible score because, listen, it's no. not horrible. It's no, not, it's like not the offensive worst thing I've ever had. I mean, there's worse Pinot Blanc out there. It's just very basic. You mm -hmm. referred to that earlier. And just not the kind of wine that I really think that is really worth anyone's while to go and seek out. I mean, ultimately, the biggest goal is to try different things, trust your own palate. And if I'm going to make somebody splurge, you know, 14 bucks here, probably 18 20 anywhere else. I mean, yeah, you know, I really, really want people to get value and I don't want them to, uh, you know, but then again, two pallets, two in the sea of millions and we could be obnoxiously wrong and you know what, taking a look at both of us, we might be. <laughs> I mean, really. We're both wearing striped shirts for God's sake. That's already a problem. All right, let's move on. This is a nice packet. Wow, this is beautiful. Yeah, really pretty little label. You know these guys? They just kind of busted under the scene and um, I went to the indie wine tasting and missed their table somehow. Four but graces. We've been talking about them in Oregon, so I'm excited the to try it. Black Family Vineyards. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous package. Four graces, Pinot Noir uh, from the Laminate Valley. Uh, 89 points, Josh Reynolds. 21 U.S. Bones. Um, Fourgraces.com. 800 number. Let's see what's going on here. Let's see. Let's see. 21 bones. Out of the Dundee Hills. I don't know if they're officially in the ABA or not, but that's where they're making the wine, so. Dundee Hills is very interesting. I've been really enjoying it. I like the color of this wine, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Right off the bat. I like the Real bottom. true, yeah. 21 bones. It is real true. You can see it's got the classic Pinot Noir coloring to it. Um, anytime you can see your fingers through it, that tells me it's Pinot Noir, and that makes me happy. Uh, 21 bones, very fair price in the scheme of things, as Pinot Noir prices have skyrocketed, uh, kind of like the Jets' potential in this season. Uh, let's give it a sniffy sniff. Mm -hmm. Tight nose. Tight, but still has a lot of the characteristic Dundee things going on. I feel like there's still a little bit of SO2, that sulfur kind of trapped Just a hair, a bit. just a hair of the SO2 coming through. What is it, an 06, so it's still young wine. Yeah. Um, I do get a little bit of cranberry coming through on the nose, yeah. which I like. A little bit of like wet forest floor in there, just barely. Yeah, a little bit like, you know, everybody gets so sad they think a wine's spoiled when it's wet dog. <laughs> but I kind of like the wet fur dog. Michelle, is that a say... dog? What's his name? Rookie. Rookie? Girl or boy? Uh, girl. girl. Rookie. That's a good name. Girl dogs don't smell as bad when they're wet as boy dogs, though. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> I, I get a lot of scrub. Rookie is a great name. You named it? Brother. That's a good job by him. Um, like the strawberries coming through yeah. on the nose here. I also get a little bacon fat on the yeah, nose. Yeah, a little bit of that. I was going to say damp bark earlier when you were saying like wet dog. It's kind of got like... I like it. I mean, there's just a little bit of like that, you know, like that you want to just cuddle in your bed on a Sunday because it's raining outside. Or, you know, you might be on vacation, you know, like in the forest, get away, no internet, you know. But it still has a nice little hint of brightness, like you said, the cranberry in there too. It's kind of got a no, little... No, the fruit's that. there. Yeah. The fruit's there. Let's give it a whirl. I mean, I, you know, I like the fact that we're really getting into the nose. Again, if you're just watching for the first time or just getting onto the scene with the Vayner Nation, I'm huge on the bouquet, the nose. You need to take in more of that. I highly recommend it. Um, I think way too many people underestimate what the bouquet and the nose, uh, the aromatics bring to the table. I think it's a big part of the experience. To put it in real life terms, I will not go to the movie theater without checking out the previews. If we get there late, I don't even want to see the main feature. I have to get there early. Lizzie knows we gotta get there early. If I miss the if I miss the uh, previews, I am crushed. Speaking of which, the guy who does the voiceover just passed away. Really? That awesome guy, like in a land far, far away. Like that guy? The guy who was in a Geico commercial? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sucks. So, um, anyway, um, yeah. Regards up to the family. Um, I need it. I need that. The previews are all, are you big on the previews? Michelle doesn't care. You? 
I like the previews. I'm huge on the previews. I'm not huge, but I do like the previews. I mean, we went to Transformers, like, the whole, like 40 of us from Wine Library, like, every preview was like, he's going to be a great one. And I, get, <laughs> I get pumped. Um, that's kind of what the nose in the bouquet is to me. I mean, I have to experience it. I have to smell it quite a bit. It brings so much more pleasure to my wine drinking experience. So many of you pop and pour. Can we stop that? Can we please... Once and for all, make the nose and the bouquet a bigger part of the experience. Speaking of which, you get a little rusty suede in there too. Not a big. I don't know the rusty suede as well. I didn't wear as much yeah, suede yeah, as you. You got to be more creative. Yeah. Just like no, use no, your... no. Listen, I mean, <laughs> some people think I'm way too creative. Yeah, I know. I'm not gonna just make up things. I'm it. You know, it smells like an old Care Bear to me, though. You know, Do you get that a little bit. Like I, you know, I never had Care Bears. Bear. No. All right, let's give it a whirl. Maybe a little My Little Pony. Definite oak influence on this wine. Mm -hmm. It's integrated nicely, though. It isn't like a piece of wood in your mouth, but it's su su supplying a lot of spice to this, which mm -hmm. is kind of nice. Is this up your alley? Is this a wine you like for your palate? Um, you know, I like a, a lot of different kinds of wines, yep. especially when it comes to categories like Pinot. Why don't you like I, the Maniacs know? Like, what, where you, where you in your, what are you, what, what's your drinking pleasure these days? You know, I this weekend I had the pleasure of drinking one of my favorite grapes almost every day, Riesling. And so that's, you know, a different category altogether from Pinot Noir. Um, did you go to Terroir? I did go to Terroir. And, um, Great bar in the city. Yeah. Big Check it out if you're in New York. Uh, when the summer of Riesling still lasts. Um, but as far as Pinots go, I'm, I'm an acid head. I lean towards the more bright fruit, more elegant, subtle wines that take you a little bit more time to kind of figure out. Or um, you have to kind of give something to for them to get back. And this one is fairly soft. Very easy to drink up front, but it's got a lot of bold spice in the back end that's kind of, um, I don't know, I find it slightly distracting, to be honest with you. On the other hand, I live in controlled chaos. I need to be distracted at every moment, and that distraction on the back end is completely up my alley. I really like the back end, Asian spice, you know, complete chaos on the back end. Mm -hmm. Tons of fruit bolting in every corner, similar to my style. I like it quite a bit. I understand where you're going, and that's really an interesting thing here, breaking it down. For you, what kind of wine would, like, where would you score this in your world, do you think? Um, it's not that it scores me anything, but just, you know, just trying to get a 88-ish, yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. I mean, so you're more close to Josh Reynolds. I to me, so. this is even better to me. Mm. I mean, to me, this is like a 91, 91 plus Pinot. I really like the back end of this wine. The part that, you know, maybe... It's missing some acidity in the, in the mid palate. Right? I totally agree with you. Yeah. I think, but you know what? I think for me, it makes up. I, so, yes, let's address that. On the mid palate, the wine could use a little bit more backbone. I think it has a mid palate. There's flavors there. But I think that uh, the acid reference that Latham's bringing is a very valid point. That being said, for me, the mid palate is so short. It's like five minutes of a great movie that you didn't like. For me, you know, so I'm like, okay, I can get over that because the finish, the end of the movie was so ripping. I'm becoming a movie <laughs> critic here for the Cisco Niebuhr thing. Right. But, you know, I, I really, really, really like the bright chaos of fruit on the back end. This whole, like, uh, mulberry, black raspberries, and then you get these spices and peppers, uh, white acacia flower component, which I normally find in, like, white wines. I get mm. a little hint of that. I almost even get, like, a mandarin tangerine kind of thing. Like, mm. it's just interesting. Very, very interesting back end fruit. There is that kind of typical white flower meats, like an orange zest thing, which kind of comes out of some of the Dundee Hills wines. But I find the nose more interesting than the palate, personally. Understood. I don't know. I, for me, I'm really hot on this. I think this has long term potential. I think this can become a little bit of a cult wine, a little mm. patty green type. Any wine that's this inexpensive in the scheme of things for Pinot that brings this much to the table, I think is worthwhile. And so, Michelle, I'm going to need you to link it up. We have a little website here from them, thefourgraces.com. I have no idea if they have a mailing list. We'll check after we tape this. I'll send you a link on AIM. Uh, let's link that up um, because I think that some people watching this should join their mailing list. I do. I and, think. And, and I understand. I, I don't dislike the wine. I like oh, the no, wine. Oh, no, listen, please. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, great. I mean, that's, you know, what I'm thinking is this is their entry wine. Uh, sure. Do you know if they make that? I don't. Ones? Like I said, I, I missed their table. We'll have to check, but I have a feeling they probably make some single vineyard stuff or probably. will eventually. And to me, anybody that can put a $20 Pinot Noir in yeah. this market yeah. of this quality has some, you know, you know yeah. you're I mean, going there. I mean, the $20 Pinots from Oregon right now are bull are crap. Most of them blow. Yeah. Bull crap. Yeah. Bull crap. Bull crap yeah. blowing. Blowing bull crap. So, you know, I mean, <laughs> I think that there's a lot of potential here. 
And I think it's something worth uh, the maniacs to sign up for. For the price, is totally worth it. I'll give it that. And ultimately, you know, it doesn't cost you anything to be on a mailing list. And if this place blows up sure. and everybody's looking for it, you can always say, Gary hooked it up. And so. the wines can only get better, right? Mm -mm. So we hope. Well, I mean, this is an 06 vintage. These aren't going to be the best Pinots, you know? That's a good point. We you know, so to do this in 06 right now, that's that's pretty nice. I mean, I to agree. have this much structure. We're going to another 06, one that you've probably had before because these guys have a lot of play. I haven't had this vintage. But you've had their wines. Yeah. I'm sure. These guys are pretty hot right now. Let's talk about our good friends at Raptor Ridge. Uh, 2006 Reserve Pinot Noir from uh, Willamette Valley. 15-2 alcohol. Um, big alcohol. 13-9 on the last wine. Um, got a nice little feather on there. 27-acre estate. 90 points Josh Reynolds. 1,104 cases produced. That's a small amount of wine. 31 U.S. dollars. And uh, let's see what's going on here. This is definitely a winery that has caught a lot of people. Rinse? I think we did a rinse already. Okay. That's how quick I am. You like that, right? Um, Watch the replay. Yeah, exactly. Let's go to the video tape. <laughs> what a roll, baby. Just found out he was from Chicago before he came to the New York market. Or some, some other market. It's kind of interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Warner Wolf. It's oh. an East Coast thing. Um, Anyway, again, can see your fingers through it. Mm -hmm. Pinot Noir, I like More that. Ruby. There's no Syrah being put in there. And these have both Cheers. been a little bit hazy. Like, they're probably not filtered wines either. Yeah, yeah this one for sure has got a little bit of that cloudiness. Cool see. Let's give it a snippy sniff. Ah. Now, this is definitely, like, you could smell the difference of the two ABAs. Dundee going to Chahala Mountains. You like the poop? I do like a little bit of the poop. There's, like, a little bit of that lead pencil kind of element, too. Really bright fruit. How do you like, like the poop, though? I like the poop. I mean, the poop. I sleep with the poop, actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but I, I mean, it, you know, it's really got that essence of manure, a little of that cowboy ranch, Wyoming. I just got back from Jackson. It's like, like a polite cow took a dump. Is what it smells like to me. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Understood. Interesting. Yeah. Um, rose petals. Definite rose petals. Bright red Pooped cherries on rose too. petals. Like you have a whole field of roses. And the cow comes over and poops on him. That's kind of what I'm getting on this one. And different cherry juice kind of smell there, too. There's a lot of cherries. A lot of cherries, a lot of strawberries, red fruit. This is a cherry, strawberry, raspberry kind of thing going on. Little manure, fertilizer, old world Burgundian thing going on. Uh -huh. And then rose petals, which is very pretty. This is a nice nose. Yeah, this seems a little bit more um, harmonious to me than the last one so far. But we'll uh, a little more put together, but a little bit more textbook. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. I guess it's more, when you see the word Pinot, you might expect this a little more. Absolutely. Let's give it a whirl. That's what the wristbands for, right? Uh-huh. Um, classic. I mean, yeah. anybody who drinks wine and doesn't peg this in a blind tasting as Pinot Noir, <laughs> and even from Oregon, right. because of the brightness there, maybe Santa Rita Hills sometimes can get this kind of funk, but usually they're a little darker because a lot of bigger wines maybe coming out of there a little mixing around with the bridles, I think. But this year, though, it's interesting. I mean, the fruit contains that that level of alcohol nicely. I can still feel it a little bit, but it's 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 mm. contained well. And the softness of the palate is just... I see, all these 06s are so soft. Like, That's a great point. Thought? I'll be honest with you. I'm glad you brought that up. Good thing you're here. I mean, I wouldn't even reference the alcohol again. Mm. I mean, I, I don't feel it on the palate at all. So great job. little monster Pinot Noir here. This is a little bit more of a New World action. You definitely taste the oak influence. Mm -hmm. A heck of a lot more in this wine. I wouldn't call it ah, no. Oak Monster, but I would definitely call it a little bit more New World than the last wine. Definitely brighter. Um, you get that bacon again. Right, and there's that kind of caramelized note from the like, like uh, cherry cola kind of backing it all up a little bit. Which I think is that oak influence as well. Mm -hmm. If you like oak, it's definitely a play here. I mean, there's definitely a little bit of oak. Where does this fall in your world? Mm. You know, I like how the acidity is a little bit stronger, but not much. It's still, this vintage is so soft and kind of almost flabby. Almost flabby. Well, it was raining. Well, yeah, a lot. You, got, you guys were pounded. Mm -hmm. That's why you want to move to the East Coast. Too much <laughs> yeah, because yeah, Saturday was beautiful. You like that, right? <laughs> um, no, but I would probably pull, pull this in about the same category for different reasons. About 88 plus, 89 points. Yeah, so for me, this is a little too New Worldy a little bit too oaky. It's funny, Josh Reynolds, who actually have a lot of similarities to palette-wise, or at least scoring-wise, I mean, however we get there, I'm kind of really in a different place. He went 90 and 89. Of course, with the first wine, I went 91, um, 90 plus 91. Um, but this wine, I'm more of like an 87. 
you know, the more I'm... 86 plus guy. I'm just kind of, I think it's a pass. I mean, I think there's so much Pinot out there for 15 to 18 to yeah. 20 dollars. You know, like, even like A to Z has this kind of, you know what I mean? And you know, the, the finish, the, I'm, I might want to take back a point or so because I'm like, yeah, fire-breathing dragon almost. Uh, yeah. The alcohol's coming out in the finish really I'm strong. just, you know, good job, listen, I, you know, this is the first time Raptor Ridge is on the show. I've been a big fan. This is really, this is what sucks in a lot of ways. I've probably had three or four Raptor Ridges uh, in the last two or three years that I've really liked. Mm -hmm. And this is probably the first one that I kind of don't like, and it's a tough vintage. So, you know, just kind of weird, just keep that in mind. Um, but an interesting show. I mean, to me, really, these were the two standouts for me. Yeah, me too. Um, well, but for you, is. this was the standout, yeah, absolutely. no doubt. Um, that was the standout of the Reds, but for different reasons than the other one. Interesting stuff. I, I, you you want to leave the Maniacs with anything? Any thoughts? Any things um, you want to recap about Oregon? Anything that may, maybe some people are looking to visit? Any places you recommend that they uh, well, hit up restaurants? Portland, and, uh, I want to give a shout out to Paley's Place, an old classic. 13 years in the going there. Uh, James Beard Award for the Tally Pelly there. And um, definitely hit up Le Pigeon. Yeah, we, where we ate meal. Phenomenal. What I mean, stuff? What was that ice cream we had? Truffle ice cream? Oh, no, no, foie gras ice cream. That was with absurd. Perfiteroles and chocolate and caramel and toasted sea no salt. Um, I used yeah, to work chef. there with Sun Bias, but there's good reason behind it. And a great sommelier there now, Andy Fort Gang. And, and how about how there. about a couple winery spots where not only will they have good wines, but good people will you know really give them a good time? Yeah, you know, um, artisanal wine cellars. Um, gonna be, you have to track them down, but they're in the August Cellars facility. Phenomenal Pinot and pretty good Viognier, too. Look them up. Uh, you did Bodecker Cellars on the show recently. What uh, happened there? What was the scene after we did Bodecker on the show? Well, they how did the Bodeckers, how did that go? Because I know you're because pretty close of you, with them. Yeah, I worked for them for a bit and um, still do actually. But um, Vaniacs really came through, contacted them like mad, uh, blew up their nice. email box Good and um, helped sell out some wine for them pretty quickly. I mean, within like 12 plus hours. So, um, And they never even heard awesome. of this guy until you guys started emailing them. So that was that's pretty cool. That is, yeah, I mean, nobody really should know who I am. Well, it's I mean, that's the not videos. the point. The point is, they're already blowing up, and I don't even know why. Here he is, <laughs> behind like, the scenes, They're like, what's going in. on? Yeah. Um, that was good stuff. They they make great wines. Anybody great. who tried any of the Bodecker wines, uh, please leave something in the comments um, about that. Uh, tomorrow, Secret Packs. Michelle, give me a little, uh, just move it over here. Yeah, just move it, don't worry. Don't be scared. Just move it. Pick it up. Do whatever you gotta do. <laughs> yeah, just pick up the whole damn thing. Um, show them this. Absolutely very good. You got it? The boxes? Beautiful. Uh, we will be doing those tomorrow, secret packs, including one certificate in the secret pack that is a free trip on the Thunder Cruise. So I'm excited about that. Um, other than that, uh, Jets win. That's always a good Monday here on the Thunder Show. Um, and uh, why don't you ask the question of the day? Because I know you watch enough to know you, um, should, you should be prepared. I know you should be something. No, a little caught off guard. Uh, I like it. Okay. Caught off guard. Hey, I can handle go, go, this. Go, go, go. <laughs> go, go, go. go. Um, if you could have it your way, how would you have it? And if the answer is change nothing, that's perfectly acceptable. Wow, that is a global, global question. If you could have it your way, how would you have it? See Michelle's reaction? She's like, what the hell are you talking about? You, with a little bit of me and awesome guys like this, we're changing the wine world, whether they like it or not. <laughs> <laughs>